Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a quick tutorial on how to achieve a realistic look for your Imperial Guard vehicles. I've been working on my Astra Militarum army on and off for about four years now. I decided recently I wanted to give the vehicles a little bit of a facelift. I wanted to go for something a little bit more realistic and industrial looking. I'll be using this Sentinel model to show how it's done, but the process will work on any vehicle. The first step is to prime the model black. I've removed the weapons as these will be painted separately. I then sprayed the whole model with Rhinox hide, which is a nice rich brown. I built this up slowly in a few thin coats to get a nice smooth finish. I'll be using an airbrush in this video, but all the airbrush steps can be done with spray cans using similar colours. Once this was done, I then repeated the process using Steel Legion Drab. I built up the colour slowly, but tried to keep the recesses darker, allowing more layers to build up on the raised areas and keeping some of the darker Rhinox hides showing through this paint in the darker areas. This is how it looked when it was done. It's already got some definition and the raised areas are slightly lighter. You don't have to be too precise with this step but the more contrast there is when the airbrush steps are done, the better the final effect will be. For the next step, I use some Carrick stone through the airbrush, this time focusing on the edges and the centre of the armour panels. This again was concentrated on the raised parts of the model, especially on the flat top and on the upper parts of the side panels. I built this colour up slowly, trying to be a little bit more precise about where it was going and making the colours brighter than I wanted them to be in the final look, as there would be a few steps later on that would knock the colours back a little bit and I didn't want the whole thing to be too dark. Here it is once all the armour was airbrushed and I was happy with the colours. It was looking pretty good at this point. I then gave it a few very thin coats of gloss varnish through the airbrush. This would give it some protection, but was also needed to give a better surface for the next step. Again, if you don't have an airbrush, a good gloss varnish from a spray can will do the same job. I left this to dry for a few hours, and then got the oils out. I used three different colours on this scheme, a burnt umber, a burnt sienna, and titanium white. These are all from Windsor and Newton, they're not the cheapest option, but the quality is excellent, and these small tubes really last a long time, as you'll only ever use a very small amount of paint at one time. I put a small amount of the burnt umber into a metal pot. This is an old egg cup that I've repurposed, and then added some white spirit to it and gave it a good mix until all the paint was mixed in. This can be a little bit of trial and error to get the right consistency. You don't want it too thick or too thin. This is about right. I then started to apply this wash to all of the recesses and the rivets. Because the model already had a gloss finish, the oil wash pulled into the recesses and didn't stain the flat areas. This takes almost no effort to do. All that you need to do is for the brush to touch the model and the paint will do all the work for you. It's very satisfying to do and far quicker than using an acrylic wash. Another benefit of using oils is that if some of the wash gets where you don't want it, you can then use some clean white spirits on your brush to clean it off, even after the paint is dried. I went over the whole model like this, making sure not to miss anything, and then when it was all dry, this was the result. There's far more definition between all of the panels, and the details are really starting to stand out now. As I would be adding more oils later, I wanted to lock this step in and save my progress, so I gave it another couple of thin coats of gloss varnish. I left this to dry for a few hours before moving on to the weathering. I'd be using a sponge for the next step, and I saw this method on Instagram recently. Unfortunately, I can't remember who did it, but it's such a good idea. Get one of the plastic brush protectors you've probably got lying around, and then poke a little bit of sponge into one end. Instant, free, reusable handle for the sponge that's far easier to use than tweezers. It works really well. If you've any idea who came up with this and who shared it on Instagram recently, let me know in the comments. I went around the whole model, stippling on some Rhinox hide. I concentrated this on the edges and the areas of the model where it would naturally get scratched and damaged. The trick is to go slow with this process. It's far easier to add more paint than it is to remove it. I kept going with this until I was completely happy, and when it was done, this is how it looked. 
The chipping acts as weathering, but also acts as a really quick, easy edge highlight. Unfortunately, at this point, I realized that I've forgotten to add any decals. I added a few of these to the model, not too many, but just enough to break up the armor color. When these were completely dry and they had set, I went back to the Rhinox hide and added a few more chips over the decals to blend them in and give it a painted on look. I then added some Black Legion contrast paint through the airbrush to a few different areas. I put this on the exhaust on the back to give the effect of dirt collected from the fumes. I also painted in the aerial with this and added some black to the end of the gun barrel. All of this could be done without an airbrush, but it's just an easy way to get a nice good blend between the colours. I also used the same black to paint in any cables and also the vision slits and the ejection port on the gun. I also added a little bit of Retributor Armour Gold to the bullets in the magazine, and when this was dry I gave it a quick wash with Skeleton Horde to shade it. And this is the almost finished look. At this point you could paint in the lenses, give it a coat of matte varnish and be done. But there's one more stage that will complete the weathering look and really finish it off. I went back to the oils that I showed earlier in the video. Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, and a titanium white. I also got some more clean white spirit in a pot and put a little bit of each paint on the piece of cardboard. This is a great technique for quickly adding streaks and weathering to a model. When it's done, it will look like it's been out in the elements and will take the paint job to the next level. It's an old technique that I've not used for a very long time, but it does give great results. I added small dots of each paint in random places, sticking to one area of the model at a time. When I was happy, I then got a medium flat sized brush, soaked it in some white spirit and removed most of it on some paper towel so the brush was just slightly damp, and then started to drag the brush down the panel, pulling the paint with it. I then cleaned the brush and then repeated this, blending the colors and creating natural looking streaks down the model. If you don't feel completely confident, then try practicing on something until you're comfortable with the process. The great thing though, is that if you're genuinely unhappy with how it looks or if something goes completely wrong, all you have to do is use some white spirit and you can remove all the paint, leaving no damage to the work you've done up to this point. I would definitely recommend giving this a go. The results can be amazing and it's really not difficult at all to do. I went over every area of the model doing one section at a time removing paint where there was too much and trying to keep the streaks as vertical as possible to give the illusion of marks from rainwater running down the armor panels. I also added a few spots of the burnt sienna under some of the rivets and then using the same process, pulled the brush down but not doing any blending to leave a streak of rust running down the panel. I left everything to dry for an hour or so and then added one more layer of weathering. I went back to the sponge and the Rhinox hide and then put some more stippling on the edges. I was quite sparing with this, but this added layer over the oils helped to add some more depth to the damaged areas and made the effects of the armor paint being chipped and worn more convincing. All I did after this step was to add a little bit of Blood Angels red contrast paint over the lenses on the hull and on the searchlight and then gave the whole thing a few coats of matte varnish to take away the shine from the gloss. And this is the finished result. It was a bit of an experiment, but I'm really happy with how it came out. I really like this look. I think it would look great with most Imperial Guard armies as it's quite generic and doesn't have any specific guard scheme colors. However, I think this will be perfect if you were looking to start a Krieg army, as this scheme would work so well with that First World War industrial look. Also, there's a quick update for the channel. I recently hit the threshold to create a membership option. If you're enjoying the videos and would like to support the channel, this will be a great way of doing that. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and that it's been useful. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all soon.